is the exciting bit. We've got our mould that we made over the past couple of days. Um, we're going to be pouring some resin into it and doing our first casts. So, safety first. You want your gloves on. You don't want your mask on. And you make sure you've got a plan so you know exactly what you're doing and um, you've got everything ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to explain what I'm going to do first and then I'm just going to do it because with the mask on you probably won't be able to hear me. So, here's my gloves. Um, this is my mask. Ta da! I'll go on in a minute. So, I've got my epoxy, and this one is one from a company, I think it's called Swindon Composites or Su Swindon Composite Supplies or something like that. I'll find a link for it and I'll put it. It's actually a coating resin, so it's one for like doing tabletops and things like that rather than a casting resin, which is for doing deep pores. Uh, I just use it all the time. It's really liquid, so if you're an absolute beginner and you haven't got a pressure pot, something like this is probably a good way to go because it's so runny, the bubbles come out of it super duper easily. Um, but whatever you've got is fine. Just know how yours mixes, whether it's two to one, one to one, whatever mix, whether it's go we're going on weight, whether we're going on volume, and read all those instructions thoroughly before you start to do anything. Okay? Um, I'm going to just be doing a really simple alcohol ink colour and let's do red. I'm going to go for a red. Okay. So I'm going to do, mine is two to one, so I'm going to do 30 grams of the epoxy and 15 grams of the hardener. If it's, if I go over with the epoxy and I've pulled 32 for example I'm just going to do 16 of that I'm not going to worry about whether I'm doing exact measurements I'm going to go for um, five drops of my red alcohol ink um, I've used it before I know that it's quite dark you, you're going to use this and basically as you're mixing add a bit more if you want a bit if you want it a bit darker <laughs> Um, and then we're going to pour it into the mould and we're going to put the mould into the pressure pot and come and release our pretty new dice tomorrow. Um, one thing that I have noticed, whenever you make a new mould or whenever I make a new mould, the first one is always like the first pancake and they're never as good as the rest of the dice you make. I don't know why, that's just what I find. If you find that too, let me know because quite interesting I think. I've got a brand new mould, see if the first one comes out poo. Okay, so I'm going to put my mask on and uh, I'm going to shut up. Can you hear me? Look, I am not flat. And I'm going to start mixing. So,
So, okay, we've got the first, I've got it mixed up, I've stirred and stirred and stirred and stirred, and stirred to the point where I'm bored and my arm hurts. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit with my lollipop stick or spatula and just dribble a little bit over the numbers in my cap. And all that's done is by putting that little bit of resin on each of the numbers, when we flip that over and there's any bubbles that are rising up, it means that that's already got resin around it, so it's less likely for the bubbles to stick in all those tiny little faces there. Okay? And then with the rest of it, <coughs> we're just going to pour into doing this way so you can see I'm dexterous pour into the moulds pouring I'm just aiming to get to the point where you've got that little meniscus so that little raised edge but it's not overflowing so like there you can just throw it bubbles up bring the camera down in a sec if you do go over it it's not the end of the world <laughs> okay let me I'll just bring you guys down a bit so you can see that the it's just bubbled above the surface rather than being flat to where that default has gone over. Yeah. So where it's gone over, I'm just gonna swipe a little bit off. Because if you put too much in, you're gonna get raised faces. So where there's too much resin, it's gonna expand. Uh, in the mold and it's going to basically push the lids off so that you've got this little floating face we call it um, and you don't want that because you have to sand that down and if you sand it down then you're going to lose the numbers uh, on the top on the top faces or your number ones um, and you don't want any of that so it's good to learn about how your resin sh how much shrinkage it's got so how much extra you need to put in this one doesn't shrink very much at all um, I think it's something like 0.2 percent so that's okay but equally as well if you're going to put it in the pressure pot it's going to compress the material and you want a little bit extra so it's just you learning that that um middle ground really of knowing when when you've got too much and when you've got too little um now with the rest of my resin my brother likes his miniatures so all i tend to do is pour into one of these tiny little like measuring cups and just leave them to set just like that and what pops out at the end is these little miniature bases, which I post off to my brother. And he goes and spray paints them black. Do you hear the contention in my voice? <laughs> okay, so back to the dice. I'm just gonna leave those to sit for five to 10 minutes just to allow any bubbles to come up to the surface. Then I'm gonna come back I'm going to pop any bottle, uh, bubbles, either with a needle or with a lighter. Um, and then we're going to put the lid on and put it in the pressure pot. So, see you in about 10 minutes. 
So it's been exactly the amount of time it takes me to make and drink a cup of tea. Um, I've come back and there's very few, I can't even pick out a bubble to say I'm going to show you how to burst it because there aren't any. I mixed it really carefully, really slowly. We've let it sit there in both pots for the bubbles to release. There's no bubbles. If there were though, you could come along with a needle and pop them, or some people choose to use a lighter, um, which does burst them really well, but you have to be aware that the heat from the lighter can affect your silicon. Um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little lid, I'm gonna flip it over the way that I know that it fits, put that on there, give it a little wiggle, with just a small amount of pressure. And where I'm pushing, I'm not pushing on where I know where the dice are, I'm pushing in those gaps where I know that I put the keys. So that any resin that's getting pushed out, any pressure, sorry, isn't pushing the resin out of the dice moulds. It's just pushing that lid gently down onto it. And you can see there's a little dribble just come out there. Just give that a bit of a wipe before we do anything else. Okay. So, and that is basically, um, I'm going to put it in the brush pot at 30 psi or 30 to 35 psi um and we'll come back to it tomorrow we'll see how it goes and here we have it straight out of the pressure pot put it on some stuff and you see it's it's overflowed quite a lot in the pressure pot um where it's been squished obviously and i put too much resin in but hopefully we won't have any floating faces and that's come off relatively easily so you're going to get all this flashing around the outside and this is where the excess resin has just gone over the edges of the mould but it should peel off really easily and not cause any too much of a trouble. And that's all the flashing then taken off and all I'm going to do same as I did with the masters I'm just going to pop them out let's see if my pancake theory is correct I always think the first ones out of any mold aren't as good no that d12 looks pretty good And just for storage, I'm going to pop his lid back on the right way around so no dust can get in there because that's the last thing you want. And uh, ready for next time. Here they are. You can see no bubbles, nice bright, clear red colour. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Okay, and then I'm going to leave those now for a few days before I polish them up or paint them. So, all done for now. Toodles.